Hello everyone. Uh, this is the video recording on vertebrate diversity part one. And uh, this will be a two-part series. You know, the second part will be on tetrapoda and amniota. Okay. So as an introduction, alam natin that vertebrates are distinguished from invertebrates based on their uh, morphological characteristics. You know? And with the advancement of molecular technology at the present and the discovery of more ver vertebrate fossils, more data has been acquired to shed light on how these animals you know, evolve. Okay? This uh, also gives way for us to... Uh, classify vertebrates not just on the basis of morphological um, similarities that we can see, okay, but also on some molecular traits as well. Okay? An example of an interesting vertebrate that we are going to talk about in this video is the selacanth. No? The selacanth uh, was thought to have been long extinct, uh, not until uh, scientists discovered uh, this living fossil in 1938 off the coast of South Africa. Okay? So uh, these are just uh, this, this is just an example of some of the interesting um, organisms that we are going to talk about today. For this lesson, we should be able to map out the diversity of vertebrates, annotate their common features, and be able to explain the transition of vertebrates from being aquatic to terrestrial organisms over the course of evolution. Okay. So, gaya na sinabi ko, no, for today's meeting, uh, gagawin natin siyang two-part series. Uh, for, for this part of our lesson, we will talk about agnathans, nathostomes, osteichthyes, and sarcopterygi. And for the next part of this video, we are going to talk about tetrapoda and amniota. So, vertebrate diversity. No? When we talk about uh, vertebrate, all vertebrates are chordates. No? Um, as chordates... Uh, these organisms would share common traits like uh, possession of a notochord. So this notochord is a cartilaginous flexible rod and it provides a skeletal support and site of attachment for muscles. You also have this dorsal hollow nerve cord, which is just um, um, right on top of this notochord. Okay? This nerve cord will develop later into a spinal cord and the brain, which will con constitute the central nervous system. Okay, And then you also have your pharyngeal slits, which are basically openings in the pharynx and would allow the exit of water and in some cases would facilitate filtration of nutrients. Okay, And also post-anal tail, which is for locomotion. So all of these characteristics are possessed by, uh, by chordates. No? Uh, it goes to say that not all chordates are vertebrates. Okay? Kasi when we talk about chordates, yung kanyang salient features would be these uh, four no, no, traits, which does not only include vertebrates. So you also have your invertebrates like echinoderms, okay? that are also chordates. No? And among all chordates, it is vertebrates that possess a vertebral column or more commonly known as a backbone. No? And backbone, alam natin, Okay, uh, provide support, no, especially to protect the, the spinal cord, which is very delicate. Okay, this backbone is also an attachment site for muscles. So when we talk about vertebrates, this includes a lot of organisms. Okay, you have your jawless fish, cartil cartilaginous and bony fishes. You have your amphibians, your reptiles, birds, and mammals. Okay? An example of a rudimentary type of vertebrate is the one that's shown on the screen. No? Uh, that's, uh, let's say, lancelet. Okay? And despite its very simple structure, it has all the characteristics of, um, of a chordate. No? You have post-anal tail, and then you have the pharyngeal slit, you have the notochord, and then the, hollow dors the dorsal hollow nerve cord. Okay? So uh, vertebrates, okay, it's uh, further classified into six major groups or six clades. You have the uh, agnathans, you have the nathostomes, ostichi, sarcopterygi, tetrapoda, and amniota. And it is believed that throughout the course of evolution, some derived traits have developed in this animal group in response to natural selection. You know? So when we talk about natural selection, this is basically a, a long process. You know? we are talk, we're not talking about months, weeks, or years. You know? 
It's a long process that results in the adaptation of an organism to its environment. And this is by um, means of selectively reproducing changes in its genotype no? or, or in its genetic constitution in a way uh, that, will, that, it, that will make it more advantageous you know, over Earth's changing geologic time scale. Okay, so yung una nating uh, pag-usapan will be the jawless fishes. No? Jawless fishes uh, is under agnathans, okay, and they look like e eels. Okay, they do not have a scale that is supposedly to protect them, but instead, sinabi natin that they have this uh, slimy skin. No, this is also their first uh, barrier of defense. No, against, uh, for example, microorganisms. Okay, and also to reduce drag in water. Okay, and unlike yung ating bony fishes, okay, these jawless fishes have what we call cartilaginous skeleton, so relatively more flexible siya. No? And if we further compare it with the modern day fishes that we have, okay, they do not have the dorsal and ventral fins in the midline of their body, which will allow them to remain afloat. So for them to const uh, constantly move no, and swim, uh, constantly move, they have to swim in the water column. And if they're not swimming, they just settle in the substrate as shown in the picture right here. Okay. Now, one thing that's distinguishable, uh, yung distinguishing feature of um, jawless fishes would be what we call the inset. Okay? Inset is this mouth right here. No? And you have in the middle of the mouth of the tongue to bore a hole in the side of its host. Okay. These organisms okay, would ingest the blood and other tissues of its host by injecting what we call yung parang proboscis like feature. Right? I think it's uh, seen in this one right here. Okay. So an example, yung classical example, or best representative of jawless fishes would be the lampreys. So I'm not going to play the video because of cop copyright. Um, uh, possible of copyright na tao uh, infringement na issues no uh, i was prompted by youtube actually yung last time na ano yung copyright issues about the, the videos are playing so hindi ko na siya play parang uh, pictures lang siya okay and more specifically th these in like fish have what we call an arcoalia which is a form of a vertebral column so compared to, to a, a vertebrate na backbone arcoalia is relatively um uh, more flexible no? compared to the stiffer version of vertebrates. Okay? And these organisms live in both marine and freshwater environments. And as I said, kanina, no, yung kanilang distinguishing feature would be this tooth funnel-like mouth that they use for sucking blood, uh, sucking blood out of their host. Okay? Agnathans are also known to be the basal lineage of vertebrates and are um, morphologically similar to hagfishes, okay? So uh, when compared to hagfishes, both of these organisms ano, uh, lack paired appendages. However, yung lampreys natin, meron siya ng vertebral elements as an adult, okay? Like say, for example, the, its notochord is surrounded by what we call an arcoalia, something which is not uh, present in uh, hagfishes, okay? Hagfish naman, these are ill in like a uh, slime producing uh, still jawless fish but they do not have this vertebra so ibig sabihin hagfish is an invertebrate no while lamprey is a vertebrate despite their striking similarities okay now we go to the opposite of jawless fishes no uh, we call these organisms nathostomes or acting jawed um fishes no and it is believed that jaws have evolved from gill arches okay and from the molecular perspective these jawed fishes have what we call hox genes okay these hox, ge hox genes are uh are are genes that encode for proteins no that are responsible for regulating embryonic development so if you try to look at the diagram right here these colored patterns right here will tell us that at particular open reading frames of the hox genes no it has been mapped out to have contributed no, to the development of the different parts of vertebrates say for example the 13th OR, uh, orf of the hox a c and d genes okay um, have imparted the limbs of adult human and also the, the anal uh, tail no, of the developing mouse embryo. 
Okay? And these Hox genes have undergone two rounds of genome duplication. That is why we have four Hox gene clusters in our genome. No? One for each uh, sister chromatid. So, uh, di ba yung X, the chromosome, di ba? Yung half tone of the sister chromatoid, chromatid. Each of these sister chromatids would have one Hox gene originally. But after two rounds of genome duplication, nagkaroon ng formation of four Hox genes. Okay? For aquatic nathostomes, Okay. There are um, jawed fishes that are adapted to parts of the ocean na wala masyadong sunlight. Okay. And this is what the function of the lateral line is, okay, which is to detect vibrations in water. This is particularly handy you know, to organisms na uh, found in uh, um, deeper parts of the ocean na kung saan uh, walang masyadong light. Okay. So an example for that would be the Dunkleostus, you know, and uh, I showed you a video during our synchronous uh, lesson. Okay, this is the fossil, you no, know, of the head of an early nathostome. It's a formidable predator. Okay, uh, yung Dunkleostus, it's very massive, you know. Just take uh, look, uh, just try to imagine, you know, 0.5 meters, you no, know, from the snout until the um, eye. Okay, ganun ka laki. How much more the rest of the body? Okay. So under nathostomes, you have the placoderms, and this includes your primitive and extinct the jawed fishes. So example niyan would be these uh, uh, Blancleostus. And yung kanilang distinguishing feature would be this armored head. Okay? And they are distinct from cartil cartilaginous and bony fish because of this uh, single nagigil opening okay? and a unique bone uh, structure na kung saan kaya pang mag-extend yung kanyang lower jaw to increase the mouth opening, okay? We also have our um, uh, modern-day nanathostomes, you know, we call them chondrichthyes or chondrichthians, okay? These organisms have bones that are entirely made up of cartilage so relatively more flexible sila, okay, than our bony fishes. Instead of scales, what these uh, cartilaginous fishes would have is uh, leathery skin, no, which are tooth-like scales, okay? razor, sharp, razor, razor sharp teeth, and a two-chambered heart. Okay, so two-chambered heart. It's a just a simple organ, you know, that pumps blood for animals with uh, gills and single circulation. Okay, and because blood leaves the gills and it immediately circulates to the rest of the body, the heart would not require additional chambers beyond the first two. So talagang one way lang siya na flow. Ano? And these organisms would respire through their gills and they do not have a swim bladder. No? If you have tried uh, making linis of isda, di ba? may para yan siyang uh, plastic no? that's uh, na gas-filled, plastic sa, sa loob niya. This is something that's um lacking in um in sharks, okay? So uh, for them to constantly move, no, they have to const uh, they have to continuously swim, okay? And um you also have your ostichthyes, no? Kung meron tayong chondrichthyes as cartilaginous fishes, you also have your bony fishes, okay? And these aquatic ostichthyes share common features. So you have your gills, okay? this one right here, that they use for respiration, although other bony fishes have evolved lungs. You also have your swim bladder, no? yung sinabi ko kanina sa inyo, yung para siyang um, plastic cellophane no? na merong gas na, na ginagamit ng fish to float at different depth. No? And of course, a two-chambered heart similar to that of chondrichthyes. And nearly all bony fishes have flattened bony scales that cover their, their skin that we can further uh, classify them, no? whether it's a uh, uh, cycloid or tenoid. And just like yung agnifans natin, they also secrete this slimy mucus no? that's um, apart from the first sign of protection, it also aims to reduce drag when swimming. Okay? And ostichthyes are cons mostly considered oviparous, okay? So oviparous organisms exhibit ov oviparity as a mode of reproduction, okay? Although some are known to be viviparous and ovoviviparous, okay? So when we say ovipari oviparity no, or oviparous organisms, 
these are organisms that has a mode of reproduction in which uh, the animals would lay eggs. Okay? Viviparity naman is the mode of reproduction among viviparous organisms wherein these animals would directly give birth to young ones. Okay? So using the two definitions, we can deduce the no, definition of ovoviviparous organisms. Okay? Ovoviviparous organisms are animals that first lay the eggs and then keep them inside the mother's body until hatching. So we have examples for that. No? Oviparous, say for example, your crocodiles. Your viviparous, of course, your mammals. Okay? Uh, some mammals, of course, uh, uh, example for that would be cow. Okay? Ovo viviparous, for example, are tilapias, are guppies, are example. No? That's why if you are into fish keeping, you would tend to observe the uh, pregnant na female na guppy, say, for example, na parang uh, at some point binabugan niya yung kanyang um, um, anak. No? That's because it's keeping... Uh, the mother is keeping the egg until it's fully hatched no, in its uh, in its body. Okay, to to this is an evolutionary re response to afford protection against possible predators. And bony fishes are further classified as either low fin uh, or under sarcopteri genop or ray fin and actinopteri G. Okay, so if we try to compare, okay, sarcopterygians, they have these uh, muscular and lobe fins, as you can see this one, relatively more round, siya, okay, and softer as compared to ray fin, no? Ray fin fishes, okay, uh, sorry, this is lobe fin, and ray fin naman have these bony rays that support the fins. So relatively mas thicker siya, and ito, ito yung makatusok sa atin kapag um, hindi tayo maingat sa pag uh, lilinis. Say for example, ang lapu-lapu. Okay? So these are just some of the examples. So sarcopterygi, no? these organisms have lobe fins that are surrounded by muscles. And it has been well established that these modified fins among lobe fin fishes have enabled fish to swim and walk on substrate. Like for example, if you look in these long fishes, no, these um, pelvic fins and anal fins mimic or like look like the modern day appendages of terrestrial vertebrates. Okay, uh, this goes the same also with silicons. Okay, na kung saan yung kanyang pectoral and pelvic fin, no, more specifically, um, parang uh, it has its own way of moving apart from locomotion sa water. And when we talk about circopterygians, we have three lineages that are present today. Okay? Uh, the celacanth, the one that's shown in the picture. So you just imagine how massive this creature is. No? Yeah, to, put, to put it to scale to a fully uh, grown human. You also have your long fishes and also some tetrapods. Okay? An example of uh, some of the parang compelling evidences no, that might tell us na baka totoo talaga or like close to reality na these um, lobe fins were the predecessors of the modern day appendages of terrestrial organisms was uh, seen in the walking fish. So I won't be playing the video kasi uh, baka i-prompt ako ulit na YouTube no, because of copyright issues. Okay. You can just search about the walking fish. No? This is specifically the red hand fish from Tasmania, Australia. Okay. So, Sarcopterygi, no? meron tayong three lineages. The first would be Salacanth. And these organism, organisms are believed to have been extinct until found by a fisherman in 1938 off the coast of South Africa. So, yung kanyang distinguishing characteristic would be this rostral organ in, it, in its anterior part na ginagamit niya for electrosensory system, for communication and locomotion. And if you try to look at its eyes, no, hindi siya ganun ka well-defined. No? And mainly because these organisms are found in the deeper parts of the ocean. Wala masyadong sunlight. So hindi niya, over the course of evolution siguro, or in that perspective, hindi siya masyadong nag-develop. Kasi hindi siya masyadong nagagamit. No? Yung loss of function natin is evident also in salakans. Okay? And this organism, okay, like that nathostome, yung placoderm natin, meron din siya ng hinge in its skull 
to allow the enlarged uh, uh, enlarge gape or opening of its mouth, okay? By swinging upward uh, its cranium, okay? Or a part of its cranium. And then you also have your long fishes. So one thing that's unique among these lobefin fishes is that they can be facultative, no? facultative in terms of uh, respiration. So they can both breathe atmospheric oxygen through their lungs and they have gills for respiration in water. And these are or these are uh, are are circopterygians that lack jaw teeth, no? but they have this unique tooth plates on their mouth na ginagamit nila for crushing small crustaceans and mollusks. Okay? And then you also have your tetrapods. Okay? So counterintuitively, we might think of tetrapods as only four-footed organisms, but in the next lesson, malalaman natin na it's not. No? It's basically... Uh, encompassing all organisms that share common descent from uh, uh, that share common descent no? be it those uh, lobe fin fishes okay and also these uh, modern day limbs of terrestrial organisms okay so these organisms most of them are, are adapted to live on land and this includes our land vertebrates like your, you have your salamander okay you have your lizard and you have your birds and even mammals okay and then actinopterygii naman are our ray fin fishes, okay? And these modifications in the body form and fin structure affected their way of locomotion, their defense, and other functions, okay? So uh, fins are used not only for swimming but also to remain, uh, to keep no, yung balance in the water column. And ray fin fishes, in terms of their importance, they are a major source of uh, protein for human, okay? Um, examples natin, of course, with our uh, bluefin tuna, you, uh, uh, sorry, our yellowfin tuna, you have your lionfish, okay? you have your moray eel, and then you also have your seahorse. No? Seahorse is also a type of fish. Okay? However, industrial scale fishing operations appear to have driven some of the world's biggest fisheries to collapse no? because of industrialization. Okay? So actinopterygii, there is no one type of fish scale that all actinopterygians share. Okay? And these actinopterygians, mali yung spelling ko pala dito, pterygians, pterygians have a uh, heavy na complex scales known as ganoid scales. No? So yung tooth and rough na uh, tooth-like scales of uh, sharks, say for example, impart its rough texture of its um, of its integument, no? And for the raven uh, fishes that are living today, no, uh, they have these uh, more flexible scales and do and reduce your kanilang weight. And we call these the leptoid scales, okay? And uh, in leptoid scales, that can either be tenoid or cycloid. So if you try to compare by looking at uh, this picture right here, no, cycloid scales, uh, have a smooth outer edge. So this is also an example of a cycloid. This is ganoid, by the way, yung parang diamond or tooth-like uh, shape na scale. And yung tinoid natin, yung para siyang may bristles, no? meron siyang parang uh, comb-like structure o, uh, on its outer edge that imparts its rough na structure. Okay? And further, actinopterygii is classified as either chondrostains or neopterygians. Okay? Chondrostains are generally primitive fish that includes our sturgeons, paddlefish, bitchiers, and reed fishes. Okay? Yung kanilang main characteristic naman would be this uh, thick bony plates on the head. Okay? So it's uh, thick and it's uh, shiny, no? Um, and rows of enlarged scales that we call scutes along its body. Okay? So that's an example. This is a sturgeon fish right here. Okay? And you also have your um, uh, paddlefish, no? And you have your um, neopterygians, okay, which is further divided as holostains that includes your gars and bowfins, okay, which are also highly sought after in the ornamental industry. And the rest of the bony fishes would be under teleos, okay. 
So that's it for our first lesson on vertebrate diversity. Ano? So here's the summary. You can, you can just read about this one. Okay. And thank you very much for listening. Okay. Enjoy the rest of the week, everyone. Bye-bye.